Support our ministry today by liking this video on our YouTube or Facebook page. Good morning. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones I, and I am an associate minister at the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church, located in Chicago, Illinois, where our pastor is the Reverend Kevin Wilkes. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, teach me your ways that I may be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, and thank God. Our lesson for today is entitled, Obedient Faith. And our background scripture comes from the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, verses one through 14, and the fifth chapter, verses one through 21. And our main thought of memory verse is Deuteronomy 14, four, and the second chapter, second verse, and it reads thus. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Obedient faith, and as we open up a new month, our quarterly thing is responding to God's grace still. But our unit two thing for October is response, responses to God's faithfulness. And obedient faith, that memory verse, it's, it says, don't add nothing to God's word, don't take nothing away from it and that you may keep the commandments of the Lord. And if you add or take away from the word that God gives us, then you can't keep his commandments because you changed it, or I changed it, or we changed it to fit our needs. And obedience and faith go hand in hand. You can't truly have faith without being obedient. And you can't be obedient without being faithful. They go together. Um, they work together. And in this lesson, Moses is telling the children of Israel about the word of God and what we can, what we are to do. Add nothing, take nothing, do, keep all the commandments, all the laws that your Lord God, which I command you. And the word never changes, just like God never changes. John 3.16 is gonna always be John 3.16. Genesis 1 and 1 is always going to be in the beginning. Psalms 23 is going to always be the Lord is my shepherd. And obedience, again, as we've been talking about faithfulness and obedience for three, four weeks or more now, obedience is always greater than sacrifice. Because sometimes we can sacrifice something and not being, not being obedient. And the only way to receive God's promises is through obedience. Because again, with obedience comes faith. And obedience helps to build faith. And they work hand in hand. And when we are obedient and our faith builds, God's promises are revealed to us in His time, not our time. And again, I can't say enough about adding and taking away from the Word. 
we have to follow God the way he tells us to. Not our way, not my way, not your way, not any other way. But only the way God tells us. And true life as God has ordained it and intended for life to be for us only comes through obedience to God. Let's go back to the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve. Everything was fine. There was no death. There was no sickness. There was no crime. There wasn't even weeds in the garden. But when Adam disobeyed God and ate from the fruit of the tree of wisdom and knowledge and the ability to know good and evil, that's when the world became a sinful place. That's when everything got out of whack from the way God intended for us to live. He didn't intend for us to have illnesses, diseases, death, even death, yes. There was no death before sin. He didn't intend for us to have to work hard. There was nothing about man working, it was about man having dominion over all that God created. But when Adam disobeyed God, that's when he told Adam, you're going to have to till this ground and work for what you eat. Women was not supposed to have child pain, birth pains for childbearing. He told Eve, now when you bring forth a child, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt you. All this because of sin, because of disobedience. And when we are disobedient, the same thing happens. Things don't work out. We get hurt, somebody else get hurt. We all get hurt. And we can only prosper through obedience. And when we are obedient, and other people, especially non-believers, see us and see that we're steadfast and faithful to God. It brings a curiosity on them. And oftentimes, God will use our faith to draw somebody to him. Because they're watching us. They're watching, the world is watching Christians. And when they see us fall apart the same way they do, then they say, well, where is their God that they pray to, that they're always talking about? But they, when we see, when people see us stand faith, faithfully and obediently according to God's will and his word, they want to know why. What have you got? that makes you so faithful, steadfast, unmovable. And not only our lives can only be what God intended through obedience, but we can only live together with one another through obedience to God. The way He planned us to live together. Not the way we're living together because of sin, but the way we were to live together prior to the entering of sin into this world. And we know that the law or God's commandments started off with the Ten Commandments. And then from there, 
he had laws and other other not other commandments for which his people us to follow and we have to make every effort at all times to obey God and before we do anything or say anything ask the question am I obeying God is this what God would have me to do is this is what God tells me to do in his word and through his word and through prayer and through the power of the Holy Spirit he don't lead us to be obedient once he leads you you got to follow just like they always say you can take the water the horse to the water but you can't make them drink God can bring you right there at the line where you have the choice to obey or disobey. That's our free will. But when we choose not to, like the commercials say, you gonna pay now or you gonna pay later. And again, we thank you for being a part of our Sunday school lesson. And our prayers always. God bless us all and keep us all. Amen. Thank God. Thank you for joining us today. We hope and pray that this Sunday school lesson has made you want to learn just a little bit more about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why don't you join us for our Sunday school at 10 o'clock, morning worship at 11.30. We look forward to seeing you there. Until then, tell somebody you love them.